gift of a gripped top sock. Okay, guys, this is how I get ready for you guys, right? So, because I need to talk, and we're going to be talking about sports medicine. I am an NASM student. Granted, I did not pass the exam yet. I haven't tried yet. <laughs> Some of the knowledge I've come across, I found quite useful, and I think everybody should know some basic rules and uh, I will be talking about them in this video right now. Are you ready? Let's do it. Right. So basically I'm, I want to start off by uh, asking you guys, do you know how to measure your pulse? Some of you might, some of you, some of you might not, but I'm going to tell you right now how. Basically we, it's very simple, right? So we follow the line of the thumb, thumb line, and we stop with our two fingers, apply some pressure right on our wrist. And this, this here is where my pulse is, right here. It's about, it's two fingers beneath your palm, literally. You will feel it, right? Now, your resting heart rate. When you're just sitting around doing nothing, right? You're like, oh my God, let's measure my resting heart rate. Let's see what my heart rate is like. This is something you should know. The lower your heart rate, resting, the fitter you are. So don't be afraid if you have a very low heart rate, you're not going to die. You're actually super fit. So that's amazing, right? Women have a lower heart rate than men generally, and we're generally colder as well. That's why we are super cold in offices and people, that, well, I haven't really worked in an office myself ever, but really. anyway, it's cold in offices for women. Take that into account, guys. Back on our subject. You just turn on any type of uh, countdown or stopwatch or whatever you might have handy. Turn it on. Get your pulse. There we go. Count within 10 seconds how many beats. I have 13. Now, with this 13, I'm going to multiply 13 by six. And that's what you should do with yours as well. You multiply whatever result you got by six. And that's calling a number. That is not the calculator, Sandra. Okay. <laughs> right, so let's go at 13 times. And now it's 78. It's not very low, but I have, I have just been for a walk. So like I am a bit, you know, this wouldn't be my resting heart rate. This would be my, I've just come from a walk and I sat down heart rate. But that's okay, 78, right? Remember that. Now, when you go to the gym and you're on the treadmill, you need to know your maximum HR. That's pretty important because toying with this, you will know whether you're burning fat when you're on the treadmill or you're burning your muscle or you are, that's not what we want to do. Why we do cardiovascular exercises is because our heart loves them, the heart muscle becomes stronger, and then also because we want to extend the time we spent in aerobic mode, okay? That is where we burn the fat. Once we've gone past the threshold, the anaerobic threshold, which is over 76% of our maximum HR, once that happens, we are not burning fat anymore. So our whole purpose with cardio is to extend this time under pressure <laughs> when we burn fat, right? Because we want to burn more fat, right? And one of them is simple, but it's not really the preferred one. Like people say it's not the best one out there and this and that. It's so simple. I'm going to write it down. It's uh, like this. 220 minus your age. I'm going to put my age, so I'm going to write here age. My age is... So would you like to know? I have to tell you, don't I? That's all right. My age is 27. So 220 minus 27, right? Is she actually going to do that on a calculator? She doesn't know what 220 minus 27 is. She probably did this a million times. Meanie. Right. It's 193. 193 is my maximum heart rate. But then there's another method, right? So this is what. Uh, the preferred one is a little bit more complex. It's 208 minus parenthesis 0.7 times your age. So minus 27 
we're gonna go equal 208 minus 18 point uh, yes I know math is not my strong point then again there's plenty plenty out there like me you might be one of them you feel me and if you don't like in math is your strong point I really admire you <laughs> okay so 0 0.7 okay it's 18.9 so we're gonna go 208 minus 18.9 equals 189.1 so this is what this method is saying it's my max H R maximum heart rate boom so now we know our resting heart rate and our pulse maximum heart rate as well and we take if we want to find out the Carvonin method reserved HR okay that equation is your maximum heart rate minus your resting heart rate in a parenthesis times desired um, desired intensity that you want to train at desired intensity and plus your resting heart rate again and that's your carvonin method right maximum heart rate minus resting heart rate times desired intensity plus resting heart rate that's it there we go if you ever need to find that out now you know how and now we're just going to go through how to measure your BMI now that's pretty interesting as well and a lot of people say that your BMI doesn't really matter in that but it does it does it is a good way of telling where you stand and if you're doing well for men, you're supposed to be between 10 and 20%, right? And you are privileged. We are women. And our body says, when are you gonna have kids? I'm gonna store all this fat, yay! And that is quite annoying because some of us, well, yeah, planning to have kids maybe sometime, but you know what? I love my abs, I go to the gym. I wish I could or less fat but I am a woman so, so uh, for us they have allowed us a little bit more they say that it's, they say of course I'm sure it is correct it is good to be between 20% a normal female normal female that is fit but not that fit between 20 and 30% you're fine you will get away with it but for an athletic woman it would be good to be under 20% now don't do what I did about I'm actually gonna post some photos in this video you're gonna see them here and there and yeah. When I was 10% body fat for two years, I don't wanna tell you what happened. I told you I've been working out like a mania for over 10 years, I've done my errors, I've learned from it, and now I'm doing the medicine part of it, but the experience is all down. And staying at 10% body fat for two years, um, I did not have a period. I wasn't very healthy, I didn't feel my brain was working quite well. My myelin sheath, with, which is a very important part in the brain, it, it connects neurons, it's like a shield. Uh, it, it wasn't working well because that works on fat and my body hadn't the fat it needed. So don't go there for a long time. Go there for a competition, I know you have to, but like, yeah, don't go there for a long time. Anyway, how to measure your BMI. You can do it on the water, but that is that is the best method, but it's very expensive and the devices would cost a bomb. And it basically just measures your floating weight because your muscles are not gonna float, right? So whichever way they do it, they just measure your floating weight and that's your body fat percentage. Okay, and then you can do it holding on to the thing with the machines, you know, you have those machines with handles. Um, you can do it like that, but that will not be super accurate because if you've drank a lot of water, it your body fat might come up uh, to a higher degree than it actually is, right? So then you have these other two methods that I will talk to you about right now. So the skin fold, the skin fold is part, the best one you can, if you, if you have, uh, 
if you have the device uh, caliper I can't believe it took me a while to remember that name caliper 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 right if you have it <laughs> use it okay you measure your triceps your biceps subscapular area which is somewhere around here don't be afraid of its fancy fancy name and then your iliac crest which is around here I'm going to post photos in this video so you know where it is uh, you need a vertical vertical and 45 angle 45 angle for the last uh, two areas that I've mentioned that is how you need to hold the caliper so basically boom 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 right um, you, you have the four sides you measure you put the numbers down add them all up and at the end of it all you pull up your Durin Wormersley Dur Dornin I never get this right can you blame me though Dornin Wormersley percent body fat okay chart and you have it all here it's quite long it's all here so it tells you what what BMI you are uh, anyway and then your final and most comfortable method to do your BMI you can do it right now if you have a piece of paper you can do it right now What's your height? Right, 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 right. I wish I could do it for you, but we're gonna do it together. Okay, so you will use your weight, and I'm going to divide my my weight by my height, and then I will divide all that again by my height, and the number should be. Trusty computer back in action. I'm 19.46, which is pretty good, and I'm very, very happy with it considering I have not been training because I had surgery and I have six weeks off from the gym, which is why I'm making more videos now. <laughs> Something to do, right? Nah, joking. I love making videos and I hope they're informative and I hope I could help you guys a little bit I don't know I hope I gave you the information that you needed and I did not bore you to the tears and stuff and um, I hope you enjoyed it let me know how you got on send me comments tell me what I'm doing wrong so I can do it better next time I will not mind uh, even if you thank you yours truthfully Sandra Moore